Hello everyone's everyone's. I am here for my review of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City Season 4 Episode 6. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Lady T. I like to do reviews on scripted reality shows, reality shows, and also do reactions. If you're returning, you're one of my peoples, welcome back. So we have one comment from last week's video, and it's from Queen Scarlet Pimp Sunkiss dot dot 5537. Hey boo. Whether Angie's husband is gay or not, whether they're swingers or not, Angie using that daughter to distract herself and maybe even her husband from something clown, cause no, 12 year old is, 12 is, okay, oh, 12 is too old for a lot of that is Angie got going on with that little girl. See, I thought I was just tripping, cause y'all know, I tell y'all all the times I ain't got no kids, I got four nephews. And I'm like, my nephews have never, like, when they was little, you got to tuck them in. But, like, once they got, like, four or five, all right, it's time to go to bed. And they would go to bed, you know. You know, we, we would still go in there and make sure they was in the bed. But, like, once they was, like, eight, ten, they didn't, no, y'all need to tuck me in. I'm good. Bye. I'm going to sleep. It was none of that, so I was like, maybe I'm just tripping, maybe I'm just weird. Like, maybe I'm just reading too, reading a little too into it, but, like, I got one other per person that's like, yeah, that's a little weird. So, I was like, okay, so I'm not overreacting. Now, y'all, let me know if I'm just tripping, if I'm overreacting, or if I'm seeing I'm bringing too much into things. But it is seeming like Whitney is using Angie to get at Meredith. Now, roll with me. Now, y'all know when Meredith planned her trip to um, Palm Springs, she did not invite Angie. But who did invite Angie? And who was, like, kind of sort of responsible for, like, all the mess that was going on? Whitney bringing Angie. That was, like, the catalyst for, like, all the mess that went on while they was in Palm Spring. Lead up to now, Meredith says one thing of, I know some things about her, so she need to stop. Whitney used that moment, okay, now I can put this all on Meredith. And that is what she has done this whole entire episode. Like, totally forgetting the fact that other people have heard this rumor, but we gonna blame Meredith, because Meredith said I heard a rumor about you. So, Angie pulls Meredith to the side to confront her about these rumors that she spread. And Meredith's like, I heard some rumors, but I haven't been spreading any rumors. Like, I just say there's rumors out there because there's rumors about everybody out there. Amber, this, Amber, this is when Angie said, well, you've been out here spreading it wide and laying it low. So, Meredith's like, this is my time to exit stage left. And Heather, she's confused about what's going on, but Heather lets it be known that... That rumor about Angie's husband going been going around for years. Like he is a hairdresser in Utah and he wears tapered pants, so people gonna automatically assume he is gay. Therefore, this isn't the first time this rumor has come out. So I don't know why we're all blaming blaming Meredith. Let Monica tell it that the group knows about the rumor and the group has talked about the rumor. So again, why are we blaming Meredith if this rumor has already been out there? I have questions. Whitney is making it her sole purpose in her mission to Meredith did this. We need to take Meredith down. She did the same thing last year. See, what the thing is, Whitney is using this, oh my goodness, I don't want any lies out there. So, we need to bring up these rumors. Same thing she did last year with Lisa. She is doing it now with Meredith. There was, um, with Angie and what Angie got going on. And it is her way to, in like, to try to take people down. Like, okay, I think this started last year to try to, um... Take Meredith down with this whole, whatever Lisa was doing to get the Utah Jazz tickets. Now it's okay. I got something else. I'm going to use, um, to take Meredith down, I'm going to make it seem like it was all Meredith who's been putting out these rumors. And Meredith, again, like, I've heard, Meredith is always a, I heard a rumor. She don't say what the rumor is, is I done heard some things out here on the streets. But she never says what it is. And the fact that, even Heather was like, yeah, the rumor is out there. Even Monica, Monica was like, well, I mean, you, you, you know, listen to Monica with a grain of salt. 
Even she says the rumor is out there. It's Whitney's like, oh my goodness. Angie's like, oh my goodness. Like, y'all have heard Elisa, oh my goodness, I don't believe it. Like, y'all have heard these rumors, but y'all won't So when them. Angie goes to tell her husband about these rumors, it's like, he's had to deal with this be because he's a hairdresser. Again, why are we blaming Meredith if this happened when he first became a hairdresser in Utah? So are you trying to tell us that Meredith started this rumor back then? Because the way it is, it is playing out is that people get into their mind, if you were a male and you were a hairdresser, you were automatically gay. So it's the rumor has already been out there, but his thing is they are Greek and adultery is like the worst thing that you can do in the culture. It's like whether it's a man or a woman, they saying I'm out here cheating again. Meredith did not say what the rumor was. It is a rumor about you and your husband. It could have been anything to what's going on with your, you and your husband. And you and yourself, Angie, have said that, yeah, I'm not saying that he's gay. I really, I could care less. I couldn't care less, is what I should say. It's the way you act and the way you, like, you and your husband don't seem like y'all have a marriage. This is what your words are. It's like people would assume. I, like, again, I really don't care. But he is breaking down crying because, like, now they got a daughter to think about. And what if the daughter hears a rumor? Again, this rumor has been out since before this child was born. So, again, why are we blaming Mary? So, Angie has Lisa and Wendy come over to her house. And, again, they have to discuss this rumor again. And if I'm thinking about it, because I just watched the um, episode. If I'm, like, really, really thinking about it. Angie kind of like, even if not everybody had heard of the, about the rumor, you like getting, uh, of course, you mad at somebody talking about your husband, whether it's true or not. The way you were screaming about this was letting the whole area know. And let's not forget that it was Whitney who decided while on camera so, Monica, what rumors have you heard? So we They just skipping all past that. And I also noticed that Monica was like, she said, no, nope, Meredith didn't say that. Meredith said it was a rumor. You are the one that said what the rumor out there was. Whether that's the rumor Meredith was talking about, we don't know. But, yeah, they over there at um, um, Angie's house listening about how Sean was crying and you know, I'm still confused because the question had been out there, so out there, so it's like this is a new news, and it is the fact that Whitney is trying to push the point that it's all Meredith's doing when she is the one that brought it up. She wanted to know that what the actual rumor was, and she is the one that brought it up on camera while Mike and everything else. So. This is when Angie was like, yeah, I met up with Lisa. I'm not Lisa. I met up with Heather. And, you know, we talked. She, she, you know, she comforted me because of what I went through. And this is, this is when Lisa, mad at Heather, felt bad for Angie. Because Heather has never comforted her in all the trials and tribulations she's had on going on in her life. It was weird because Lisa don't see it for Heather like that for real, for real. But so why are you mad that she was comforting somebody else? You spent your hers two, a little bit of three seasons, not liking Heather or Whitney. But some reason Whitney is like, like erased that from her memory that Lisa don't like her. So like she just forgot all that. But, like, it was weird because, like, you don't like Heather. Don't see it for Heather. But you mad that all the things that you've gone through over the years that she has never comforted you. Like, she turned this whole, we feel sorry for what you've been going through and all this, Angie. She turned that into a, how come I didn't get comforted? I went through a lot. I, like, I know it's really raw, but this is like one thing that happened to you. The things that I've dealt with was for years, and Heather has never comforted me, even though I have treated her somewhat like trash. Lisa, I'm going to need you to sit down somewhere, boo-boo. Heather, how many times am I going to see you pick up this nasty piece of snow off this nasty piece of ground and put it in your mouth and eat it? I am done. Last week when you was out with your daughter, you went over there and took a hunk of snow off the ground and distributed it to you and your daughters to make your cocoa warm, uh, cooler. 
this episode, you reached on the ground, picked up a piece of snow, and proceeded to eat it. Now, y'all, I get anemic every once in a while, so ice be my thing. I have never thought, hmm, there go a piece of snow on the ground. Let me eat that. My favorite ice is from this store in Indiana, Evans, Indiana, called Thornton's. They got one in Kentucky, too. The best ice. It's the best nugget ice. I know we ain't hear about what the ice I like. We talking about, least, um, what's her name, Heather, eating this snow off the ground? Like, you do realize this is nasty. See, this is why I don't eat at everybody's house. Because you think it's a good idea to pick up this piece of snow off the ground. People been skiing and sledding and snowboarding and just walking and everything else, including the elements. And you picking up this piece of dog on snow off the ground and just crunching on it like it ain't nothing. I'm going to need you to stop, ma'am. But anyway, Heather and Whitney, they discuss Lisa's son Jack going on a Mormon mission. And Heather wants to know, like, do you think this is weird? Because, like, she's asking Whitney, what are your feelings on this? Because she, you know, Heather and Lisa had a talk. Because, you know, Heather is the, I believe the only one out of this whole group has actually been on a mission trip and she knows how hard it is and all these things and what you go through and now that she is no longer with the Mormon church and she realized how their ideals don't align with hers and some of the preachings and the teachings she no longer wants to do or accept but she wants to know Whitney's feelings. Because Whitney's basically like, well, it doesn't matter to me. It's like, she thinks that's weird because you yourself have said how the tr the church was very traumatic and dramatic for you. And you even went so far as to write a letter to leave the church. And you have no feeling about this young man joining this church. Because Heather, she's like feeling guilty because like... I did the missions. I She was like a faithful woman, like going door to door. I don't know if the women get to go door to door or not, but like really trying to convert these people to his religion. And she's thinking she's done them more harm than good. And she's feeling some type of way. She wants to warn Jack, but like, how do you warn somebody's child that they be, what you're about to get to into may not be something you want to get into? A sort of throwaway scenes were Monica and her kids, her getting her kids together, her having this full on fallout with her mama at the adult senior citizen, the senior citizen center, and the grandma had to tell them they need to shut up because like they was getting loud and they was talking dirty, and the grandma was like, "We not finna do that up in here. These are my friends. I'm afraid you not finna uh, embarrass me over here." Because um, Angie's mama wants Angie's daughter, it seemed like she wants them to be raised in, raised in the Mormon religion, even though she left that religion and she told Angie, I'm I'm upset with myself for raising you in that religion, but she wants her grandkids to be raised in that religion. Okay, Angie's like, not, not Angie, what's her name? Monica's like, okay, that's good now, but you know, stop coming in my house without knocking on the door. Because I could be doing something strange for a piece of change on the couch. Not a piece of change, but y'all know what I mean. Yeah, we had that scene. We had a scene with Lisa and Jack, I think it is. Yeah, Jack. Then go get their feet done. And they discuss his upcoming mission trip. And she's discussed how, like, she can't really go to, like, the, the fancy, fancy temples in town. Because, you know, she like to drink Diet Coke. And that might not make you holy and, you know... People might drink alcohol, so that might not make them holy. So, it's kind of sounding like what Her Heather is. What I was trying to put Heather and Meredith together. What Heather was saying is true. is like, Jack's going to come back a different person. And the life that he's going to be living, if he, like, gets full into it, may not align in what Lisa got going on in her house. So, you might want to look out. That's the kind of vibe. That was the gist. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. 
If you are new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. It is free all day, every day, free 99. Make sure your notifications are on to my beautiful face with a video. You can click on it, you can like and share it to your people, and you can come over and be one of my peoples. If you're already one of my people, so welcome back. Y'all know what to do. And tell your people to tell their people to come over and be one of my peoples by clicking that icon above. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.